Save points are places in your game where you can take a breather, a spot where you can let your guard down and log your progress. At least that's what they're supposed to be. Sadly, not all games got the memo, or more precisely, some games did get the memo and then deleted the memo and then evilly decided to exploit our trust in save points to try and murder us. Tread carefully as we inspect these treacherous save points that tried to kill you. Thanks to commenter the talk through for the inspiration behind this list and beware spoilers for the following games. In Hollow Knight, one of the few places that provide respite is a comfy bench. These checkpoints allow you to replenish your health, change up your charms, update maps. It's basically a safe spot after an often long and perilous journey from the last bench, where you can sit, save your progress and enjoy your, um, surroundings. But there is one bench you find when you reach the distant village in Deep Nest where you should absolutely not sit and enjoy your surroundings. And there are a few clues as to why. First off, everything is covered in some kind of web, which, in a mysterious world populated with insects, is never a good sign. Second, when you enter this grand hallway, all the bugs there are slightly too keen for you to sit down on the bench in the middle of the room. Oh, man. Like, all of them. Are these weirdos working on bench commission or something? And third, listen to that spooky as heck out of tune music. And indeed, all your fears are confirmed if you decide to park your butt on that bench, at which point, well, see for yourself. Oh no, this isn't good. Wait, are they coming closer? Please don't tell me this is going where I think it's going. Oh no, it's going somewhere much worse. Yes, instead of just mercifully being eaten alive on a black screen, these spiders in disguise have wrapped you up for later and stashed you in their vile version of a pantry. This webbed world is an arachnophobe's worst nightmare, mostly thanks to the shadows of spiders scuttling all over the place, which are honestly a million times worse than any of the actual enemies you fight and will give you a strong urge to set fire to whatever screen you're playing on. Ah, burn it! After this, no matter how tired your little legs are or how desperate you are for a checkpoint, you'll definitely be more careful going forward about resting on unfamiliar benches surrounded by creepy weirdos, as we're pretty sure being thrown into a spider's nest is the opposite of rest. Blech. Undertale is a game that enjoys messing with players so much that it would be weirder if it wasn't on this list. This odd RPG loves going meta and playing with our expectations of video games, so of course it decides to freak you out over save points on multiple occasions. First off, there's one save star that, when you go up to it, turns out to be a trap set by the evil Flowey the Flower that deletes your save, traps you in his world and puts you in a boss battle that's so nightmarish you'd probably have to eat three entire cheese wheels before bed to make your actual dreams anything like it. Well... One other very notable example can be found in the super spooky True Laboratory, home to ghosts that appear sinister at first but actually don't want to kill you. Actually, that was creepier. But not content with just messing with our heads, Undertale yet again messes with a save point, as this sparkly save star starts to smile when you interact with it. Oh god, what's going on? Yes, yeah, sorry, but that save star was not actually a save point at all, but a huge monster, namely Lemon Bread, a shape-shifting nightmare creature that wants to crunch you into little bits with her huge teeth. <laughs> Lemon Bread was made in this spooky lab, and, well, it shows. If only we could unread the words, you hear the melody of pulsating flesh. Ugh. Plus, when you defeat Lemon Bread, you don't even get awarded with a real save point in this creepy-as-heck lab. But to be honest, we probably wouldn't trust it anyway. Damn it, Undertale.
many Trixie save points in this list like to pretend to be the real deal, but Castlevania Symphony of the Night plays things a little differently. When wandering the underground caverns, you can come across a save room with a difference. Instead of the usual golds and reds, this save point is glowing purple, which, in a world full of mythical monsters, is probably not a good thing. But hey, what is life if not for taking risks? So you interact with it and, of course, instead of saving your game, this save point pulls you into a nightmare world. Gah, will we never learn? Here you come across a dark tableau of Alucard's mother Lisa, tied up by an angry mob set to murder her for witchcraft. Upon seeing Alucard, Lisa's motherly instincts kick in as she tries to comfort him with her last words. Yes, Alucard. Watch me die and remember always my last words to you. Yes, mother. You must despise humans. They are to be your prey. What? What? Indeed! The normally forgiving Lisa sounds pretty harsh right now, to be honest. Why? Well, turns out this isn't real at all, and definitely not an accurate memory of Alucard's. The scene is a spell created by a succubus, which is about as far from saving our progress as we thought we could get. <laughs> you broke free of my spell! I like that! Well, we don't like you, succubus. And in order to escape, you have to, you guessed it, fight the weirdly flirty demon so that we can get the hell out of here. <coughs> Upon defeating her, you're rewarded with a very uncomfortable death scream that you'll have to explain to your housemates. Wait! I beg of you! <coughs> Awkward. Plenty of games like to use sounds to signal that an action has been taken. For example, a noise when you pick up special collectibles as an extra indication that yes, you definitely picked that thing up. Or that yes, you definitely saved your game just now, such as here in classic RPG Chrono Trigger. Noises like this are generally accepted to just be useful audio flags for the player and are not heard by any nearby enemies. I mean, imagine if a zombie heard you every time you used a Resident Evil typewriter. But this is basically what happens in Chrono Trigger when you enter the obligatory sewer level. Turns out this area is full of monsters that don't attack just on sight, but on sound. A note at the end of an abandoned diary says, The fishmen attack if I make even the slightest noise. Hence you proceed, being as quiet as possible, until you reach another sparkly save point, at which juncture you naturally decide to save before taking on more of these fishy fiends, and then... Whoops, silly you. You didn't realise that the little jingle that you've been hearing every time you save in the game can also, apparently, be heard by other creatures in the world. So instead of saving your game, this deceitful save point was nothing more than a trap that summons a bunch of sound-sensitive fishmen to attack you. Oh, damn it. Minecraft is a wonderful game of gathering resources, building cool things, and getting scared half to death when a creeper explodes right next to you. Ah! One place you're safe from monsters is in your bed, where you can sleep through the night to avoid the worst of them. While the game itself doesn't have save points, you can build a bed to create your own respawn point. So, should a creeper creep up and kill you, you'll just climb out of the last bed you slept in, usually in whatever nice little hut you've built. However, there are places where beds are definitely not a safe haven, one of which is the Nether, the otherworldly dimension full of lava, zombie pigmen, and bad vibes. It's understandable why some people will want to save their progress as they traverse the Nether, which is a hostile environment that's dangerous to explore, but also contains some of the coolest and most unique resources in the game. Fathoming this cavernous hellscape is a big dangerous project, so hey, maybe you want to create a spawn point along the way in case you fall in the lava or get got by a ghast. 
But wouldn't you know it, your precious bed-based spawn point won't help you here in the nether. Instead, they come with a deadly and highly unexpected twist. Make a little safe haven, pop down a bed and try to sleep. Ah! Yup, sorry, but you can't make a new spawn point in the nether. See, according to Minecraft, that would make exploring this dangerous nightmare realm a little too easy. And what's their solution? To make your bed explode, of course. Not great, particularly if you had any chests set up nearby or like us, you were carrying your diamond pickaxe with you and it immediately got burned up when you died. Now, if you'll excuse me, I just have to step away from the mic a second. <laughs> Uh, hey, you sure this rabbit hole's really the way into Arcades? Better a hare unseen than a rat in a trap. Players never want to miss a save point, so it helps when they stand out. One game that excels at this is Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age, where save points are huge shiny crystals you can find just littered around the world, which is weird because if we were main character Vaughn, we'd definitely try to steal one. However, Final Fantasy is not above messing with its players, as evidenced by the existence of the Sochan Cave Palace. In here, alongside regular looking monsters, is a save crystal that isn't all that it seems. Found on its own in a huge ominous looking room, if you try to save using this crystal it'll attack you instead, due to it not being a save crystal at all, but a so-called crystal bug. To be honest, it doesn't look much like a bug, more like a, well, exactly like a save crystal. But even without mandibles, a thorax or proboscis, this thing can still hurt you, casting magic at your team. We have to wonder how long the crystal bug had been waiting down here for someone to try and use it, but we also have to try not to think too hard about how weird it is that a creature evolved to look like a save crystal. Can everyday people in Ivalice save and reload their lives? Or do they just interact with save crystals for their restoring properties, hence the crystal bug being a perfect trap? Fortunately, before you can ponder all this, you take it out fairly easily and are rewarded with an actual save crystal. Phew, didn't need to think any deeper about Final Fantasy XII. Bonfires in Dark Souls are a brief and beloved bit of light in the very dark kingdom of Lordran. Igniting bonfires and resting at them gives you new checkpoints, replenishes the healing Estus flasks you carry with you, and resets all the enemies around the place so you can go back to where you've been before and farm them for more delicious souls. Mmm, gonna use these to level up back at the bonfire. See you again in about five minutes, bud! However, there is one bonfire that you should definitely not plan on using for farming, and that's the bonfire in the room where you fight Gwyn Lord of Cinder and his twinkly piano. See, this isn't your average checkpoint. This is actually the end of the game, which might not be obvious to players who have rested at a bunch of bonfires directly after boss fights extremely similar to this one. Interact with this bonfire and you don't just rest at it. Instead, when you light the fire, you become consumed by the flames, turning into the new Lord of Cinder and, most importantly, ending the game. Now, ending the game might be a good thing in some ways. That's ultimately the goal of most players, and it means you get to stop playing Dark Souls. But it is a pain in the butt if you hadn't quite gotten around to an optional boss or two, or were building yourself up to play the DLC. Damn it, I'll get to you one day, Artorius! This may be an inevitable part of the fateful cycle on which the world of Dark Souls turns, but we've never felt more betrayed by a friendly looking bonfire. Also, you're on fire! That's got a sting. So those were the save points in games that you approach thinking, oh yes, time to save the game, and then BAM! Betrayed! Betrayed by the very save point that you trusted so inherently because that's what you'd been trained to do by every other game. I mean, for goodness sake, is nothing sacred. If you can think of any other examples, then hey, why not let us know in the comments? And if you enjoyed this video, then please do like and subscribe. And on screen right now are a couple of other videos that algorithmically, the algorithm believes that if you like this one, you'll probably like those as well. And who are we to deny the algorithm? So why not give them a go? Thanks for watching. Goodbye.